We have heard that Lyndon Johnson, the new president, was going to make a speech here tonight on arrival. The microphones are set up. He appears to be walking toward them now. These microphones are just about four feet back from an encased area for the press. of both parties, both houses of Congress, to meet with him at the White House tonight at 7.15. Senator Dirksen said earlier this evening that he thought the plans of Congress would depend on precisely when the funeral is. Many, many members want to go to Boston for the funeral. But he said he did not feel is still talking with leaders of the Senate. Mrs. Maureen Mansfield is there with Senator Mansfield, the Democratic Senate leader. Mrs. Mansfield was weeping before, as were many of the women who came out here to the airport. The Office of Protocol tells us that almost every embassy in town called the State Department today to find out the plans so that they could be here uh, when the plane arrived at Andrews Air Force Base. Now Among President Johnson is moving towards the Army helicopter for the flight to the White House, where he has a meeting scheduled tonight with Secretary McNamara and McGeorge Bundy, other officials. He's shaking hands now with Bill Moyers, one of his aides who was with him during the campaign and who has been with him in most of his activities for the past several years. One of the people who came out here was Senator Aiken, who said, I'm just beginning to realize what happened. President Johnson needs our help. Chief of Protocol, Andrew Biddle Duke, was out here meeting President Lyndon Johnson. This entire ceremony here has been hastily improvised. Telephone circuits, all plans, put together very quickly. The Secret Service 
handled all the arrangements of the late president's body and the arrangements for President Lyndon Johnson's arrival. The Air Force base itself, the Air Force handled all the many other details that were necessary at a time like this. The helicopter bearing new President Lyndon Johnson is about to take off. Now the Army helicopter preparing to take off. The rotors beginning. Take off for the short flight from Andrews at Air Force Base outside Washington to the south lawn of the White House in downtown Washington. Inside the helicopter, you can see aides talking in animated, very concentrated conversation. President Lyndon Baines Johnson is his wife, Lady Bird, who is always at his side, has been with him in his long road up the political ladder from the days he started out from Stonewall, Texas. is now disappearing from the field. Press dignitaries are moving away. The plane, the presidential plane, the United States of America, it bears no other insignia but that. There, the baggage is being taken off, hastily packed. Now, the 55-year-old, Lyndon Baines Johnson, this is on his way to the White House, the first time he will enter the White House as president. Thus, the arrival in Washington, the body of the late president, John F. Kennedy, and President Lyndon B. Johnson. President Johnson walked off the aircraft rather slowly, his wife beside him. He walked up to a cluster of microphones and said, this is a sad time for all people. Speaking of the death of the president, he said, it's a loss that cannot be weighed. He called it a deep personal loss. Then President Johnson said, I will do my best. That is all I can do. I ask for your help and God's. That is all he had to say. Uh, we are told that the president's body, which was removed from the aircraft first and casket placed in the naval ambulance, will be taken to Bethesda Naval Hospital, and that uh, tomorrow uh, the president's body will lie in the east room of the White House. Uh, there are no announced plans for any public viewing of the president's body. There will be none tomorrow. Members of the family, top officials of the government, uh, members of Congress, and uh, members of the diplomatic corps will go to the White House tomorrow at specified times to pay their respects to the late John F. Kennedy.